Gear up, Godzilla fans, because we are exploring a new version of the favorite colossal beast that plagues the streets of Japan. It is none other than from Godzilla Singular Point. The behemoth beast has been a popular character in pop culture for years, with a slew of movies and series. In Godzilla Singular Point, we see the creature that is considered as the sea monster Gojira in Nigashio Legend returns to terrorize Tokyo. Toho, which is the company behind this new series, has gone all out in the production of the show. The animation, music, as well as the characters are off the charts. So, hold on to your seats as we take a deep dive into the secrets behind the kaiju, not the ones you were thinking about from Pacific Rim, and the different forms of the Godzilla. Welcome to another marvelous video as we unravel Godzilla Singular Point. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Tracing the Origins of Godzilla Ultima Let us start by tracing the origins of Godzilla Ultima, the version of Godzilla that we are treated to in this new series. Traces of the beast are seen in the local folklore of the village as Mi is seen photographing a mural depicting the beast. Godzilla looks like it is something straight out of a Lovecraftian story. During feudal time, Godzilla was worshipped as a god of destruction that was an extra-dimensional deity. It was in the 1950s that Godzilla rose from the depths again to unleash chaos on a small fishing village that was unlucky to be located on the warpath of this colossal creature. The Japanese military was able to take down the beast, and with the memories of World War II still fresh in everybody's mind, Godzilla became nothing but a bedtime story. But the actions of Mishiyuki Ashihara, one of the village's resident scientists, proved to be disastrous as he spent half a century pouring over Godzilla's skeletal remain and a curious substance named Archetype found within. After a brief period of time, our scaly friend emerges from the depths of the ocean, ready to fight it out with submarines and snack on a bunch of mandas. As Godzilla snacked on the mandas, it underwent several transformations that enabled it to walk on land and continue its reign of terror. It was the actions of our protagonist that led to the crisis being solved, but the catastrophe did not end there as it evolved into the ominous threat of Mecha Godzilla due to a secret squadron hatching a plan to weaponize Godzilla's bone. But that is a story for another time. Godzilla's evolution in Godzilla Singular Point So, how does our seafaring beast walk on land and unleash such massive destruction? What was the mysterious dust that the scientists studied for 50 years? What are the different forms of the beast that we see in the series? We are left with these burning questions. So, let us dive right into it. The series showed four different forms of Godzilla. Each form proved to be more powerful than the last, with different features. The first form that we are shown is Godzilla Aquatali, the sea form of the beast. In this form, Godzilla has reddish yellow skin with red colored veins on his dorsal fins, which are the fins on his back and an underbelly that is covered in spikes. Talk about being prickly. The creature also has claws on its fins for that extra sharpness. His body is like that of a Mosasaurus while his face looks as if it is a crocodile with a pair of huge antennae that can be seen on a titanosaurus. Dual fins can be seen on his cheeks, with one fin on his head, which is bigger in terms of size. And let us not forget the humongous tail, which has not one, but three fins that spread out from the tip when needed. Moving on to the second form of Godzilla, which is its amphibia form, that it uses when it went on land after snacking on the manda it hunted down. This form resembles its aquatic form, but is devoid of its fins. The spikes are much bigger, and Godzilla becomes much darker in color. His rear legs become shorter than his front one, and his tail has three barbs instead of his fins. He also has webbed feet, which are reminiscent of amphibious creatures. He creates a cocoon that looks like an exoskeleton with the texture of rocks. During a fight, Godzilla Amphibia is capable of releasing a flammable vapor and creating giant mushroom clouds. The cocoon was bombed by the JSDF, which led to Godzilla's third form, which is the terrestrial form that honestly looks as if a T-Rex had a baby with a Gorosaurus. This form is the one we are most familiar with, and features a green body with a yellow underbelly, elongated face, huge lower jaw, and he does not have the spikes that were on his tail. His dorsal fins become much larger along with two more rows on his body. It stands in a more grounded theropod-like position, and can extend tentacle-like formations from wounds caused by attacks. It also displays supreme regeneration abilities and emits a distinct blue glow from its dorsal plates. 
After a tedious battle with the JSDF that resulted in a weakened state, Godzilla evolves into his fourth and what could be possibly his final form. The form, which is known as Godzilla Ultima, has a resemblance to the early Showa-era Godzillas but with a more monstrous appearance. This form features a charcoal black crocodile-like body with white dorsal plates and sharp teeth with two huge fangs sticking out of the top of his mouth and osteoderm-like features on his neck and forearms. This form utilized all the abilities that the previous forms had, but with increased effectiveness. Godzilla was able to terrorize Tokyo on a whole other level with his new monstrous form. History of Godzilla Singular Point, from story to main characters. So, now that we have covered our monstrous Godzilla, let us take a look at the different aspects of the series, such as the story, our protagonists, and the various secrets that they unravel. A different reality. The series reveals the existence of a different reality. According to the research that is shown in the series, May, Professor Lee, Bibi, and Ashihara all believe that a dimension other than the world exists, which explains the existence of archetypes. It is from this world that the kaiju are emerging from. Let us meet the two heroes. The story begins with one of our protagonists, Yun Arikawa, an engineer who works for the local Otaki factory, investigating a mansion which leads him to a mysterious song. This same song brings our other protagonist, Mei Kamino, a graduate student studying theoretical life forms into the picture. Mei investigates Yoon as she tries to figure out Otaki factory and their services and is oppressed by Yoon's resume. Now, let us dive a little bit deeper into our characters. The first protagonist we meet is our brilliant engineer and programmer, Yoon Arikawa. The quiet personality is portrayed as someone who is curious and highly observant. His deduction skills could rival Sherlock Holmes, as he accurately deciphers what his partner Katsu Habaru would have for dinner. According to him, future events are already set in stone. The answers to it are only hidden and waiting to be discovered. He has a heroic trait, jumping into danger to save others without a care about what happens to him. During the progress of the series, we see Yoon use his resourcefulness and quick thinking to stabilize dangerous situations. He shows a deep understanding of the monster's behavior and attempts to decipher the mysteries surrounding their origins, singular points, and the archetype substance connected to their existence. The second protagonist of the show is Mei Kamino, a brilliant graduate student who is studying theoretical life forms such as butterflies in different dimensions or dolphins swimming in time. She is portrayed as the central figure who is leading the research into the nature of the archetypes and the impending catastrophe. An intellectually curious person just like you, Mei has a strong passion for scientific exploration and is the person who is closest to Ashihara the mysterious scientist who conducted the research into archetype. Even though Mishiyuki Ashihara, who was the mysterious scientist, does not make too many appearances in the series apart from the photographs and other references, the entire story of the series revolves around his work. Other characters include Goro Otaki, the eccentric old man who owns Otaki Factory, and whose paranoia ends up in the creation of Jet Jaguar, and Katsu Habaru, Mei's classmate in high school, who is obsessed with working out and has the nickname Barbell in high school. On the research side of the series, Professor Lee Gaing, who invites Mei to work on the research about archetypes, and Barak Byrne, also known as Bibi. Although he is never addressed using his full name in the series, he is always addressed as Bibi. There is also Satami Kanahara, another employee of Otaki Factory, Shunya Sato, an employee of Misa Kyoku, Takehiro Kai, a self-employed journalist, and Mahita Nakagawa, who is an aide of Professor Lee. What is that song? The mysterious song that pops up in the first scene of the very first episode is very creepy. It is as if it was a scene straight out of Ghostbusters, with Yoon Arakawa and his partner Katu Habaru checking out a house that looks as if it was haunted. Yoon, using his superb observation skill, follows the sound of the music, which leads him to a hidden space behind a bookshelf, where he finds a crystal radio playing this song. Yoon explains that the crystal radio converts the energy received from radio waves into sound. That explained how the creepy and mysterious song could be heard without power. Mei is also brought into the story to figure out what the song is, as the instructions are left behind for the alarm at the Misa Kyoko headquarters. The instructions specified an expert should be brought in to identify the signal, but Mei was brought in at the suggestion of the expert that the headquarters tried to contact. It is shown through Yoon that the mysterious song is titled Alapu Upala, which originated in India. The song is tied to the appearance of the kaiju, and the song was used by Misa Kyoku, who continued the work of the scientist, who kept the bones of Godzilla to monitor the signals that these bones emitted. It is revealed by the new AI controlling the Jet Jaguar that the AI is from the future, and that it was transmitting its own code to the past through the song. What is that dust? So whenever a kaiju made an appearance, a mysterious red dust also made an appearance along with it. This strange red dust was quite a problem for the environment and had a lot of scientists scratching their head. Well, what was this weird red dust? 
The red dust was a type of the archetype that plays a huge role in the series. The kaiju required the archetype to survive, and the red dust was the basic form or phase of the archetype. Other forms or phases of the archetype included red-colored liquid that looks like blood, metallic blue crystals, and thin red-colored spires. The Badass Robot The first appearance of this badass robot is at the Otaki Factory, when one of the side characters goes there for a follow-up on the inquiry about the mysterious song. Further scenes show that the robot was being worked on by the eccentric old man, who thought he needed to protect the Earth from aliens. Even though he was a world-renowned engineer and held multiple patents, he was considered to be weird but his paranoia paid off in the end. Was it a plane? Was it a bird? Was it a drone? No. The first opponent of our Jet Jaguar robot was a flying kaiju that looked like it was a curse from Jujutsu Kaisen. Freddy probably would have nightmares from seeing the kaiju. Now I know what you were thinking. Is this not the plot of Pacific Rim? Badass robots fighting ugly monster. Well, Pacific Rim did not have this badass robot and freaking Godzilla in it. And sadly, we only got the one robot to fight against these monsters. So Yoon, the old man in Katu modified this old robot that was named Jet Jaguar due to the old man's obsession. Yoon had programmed it to be interactive for the festival attendee, but he had to quickly reprogram it to fight the kaiju that showed up. The robot was used again to fight another kaiju which was named Angiris. It was after this fight that Yoon added his artificial intelligence, Narutaki, young, as a piloting system for the Jet Jaguar. The new and improved robot made its debut appearance in a fight against the kaiju called Kumanga, Kamanga, Haninga, and Zinbunga that looked like they were the viruses that almost destroyed Sugar Rush from Wreck-It Ralph. The combat sequences it displayed during the fights were amazing to watch. It is time for us to take a look at what kind of powers this robot has. The robot has superior physical strength, as it could hold its own against opponents such as Rodan, Angiris, and even Godzilla. With the addition of Yoon's AI, the intelligence of the Jet Jaguar increased to the next level, which can be seen in how easily it wields the Spear of Angiris. And in learning the spear handling protocol, the robot is also extremely durable and is capable of withstanding attacks from multiple opponents. It can also fly with the help of propulsion pack. The weakness of the Jet Jaguar is that it has a limited battery capacity and needs to be charged periodically. This weakness becomes apparent in its fight against Kumanga, Kamenga, Haninga, and Zinbunga, which were the insectoid kaiju that looked like those viruses. A different concept and the secret behind the emergence of the kaiju. An interesting concept that is shown in the series is the archetype. May stumbles onto it as Professor Li Gaing contacts her about the paper that Pelops 2 publishes based on her research on extra-dimensional life form. What exactly is this archetype? It is something that our mysterious scientist who hid the bones of Godzilla has been secretly researching about. From what we have learned so far, the archetype is a substance that can defy the laws of physics. The mysterious scientist Ashihara found traces of the archetype in the bodies of local sea life, especially jellyfish. Further research revealed that there were natural spots where the substance accumulated. These spots were known as singular points and were places where archetypes could be mined. The red dust left behind the kaiju was a form of archetype. The reason the first wave of Rodans died out was because of the lack of archetype in the environment. The subsequent kaiju that emerged had the archetype in the form of red dust present in their bodies. Godzilla could be seen releasing huge amounts of red dust. As a substance that could defy the laws of physics, archetype was capable of bending space, light, and time. If utilized properly, the archetype is capable of being coded to manifest in different forms. The Super Dimension Calculator had the ability to utilize archetype for processing enormous amounts of information throughout space and time. This enabled it to pick up signals and data sent from both the past and future. On the other hand, the Orthogonal Diagonalizer had the power to transform one variety of archetype into a different form, granted that the specific code corresponding to the transformation was known. Paths that connect. The series took an interesting path in which the two protagonists were shown tackling the problem from two different sides. While Yoon was in Japan, helping to take down the kaiju using his brilliant programming skills, along with Jet Jaguar and his team from the Otaki Factory, Mei was traveling the world trying to decode the research of the mysterious scientist Ashihara. The two never meet each other during the series, but keep in touch as Mei was using the AI that Yoon had programmed. The conversations between the two were both fun and confusing to watch. Due to the amount of scientific jargon being used, a lot of the side characters were shown tackling the issue of an imminent catastrophe in their own way, but it could be categorized into either May's side of research or Yoon's side of practical application. It is not until the end of the series that May and Yoon meet each other face to face. Their quest to prevent the end of the world brought them together, even though they were on different paths to find the answer. 
The clock is running out. After going through Ashihara's work and research, Mei realizes that he saw a future in which a catastrophe was imminent. According to Ashihara, the world would end if the archetypes were allowed to run rampant in the form of red dust, as it would terraform the earth, making it inhabitable for humans and the ideal environment for the kaiju. This brings a sense of urgency to the finale, as it becomes a race against the doomsday clock to stop the apocalypse from happening. Godzilla Ultima, Harnessing World, Destroying Powers Now let us take a look at the world-destroying powers that are used by Godzilla in all of his different forms. First up, we have the razor-sharp claws and fins that he uses to make paper cutouts of military vehicles such as submarines. These fins protrude out of his tail and back and are a deadly weapon in his arsenal. Godzilla is able to use his atomic breath in two of his forms. In his Godzilla Terrestris form, he produces a powerful blue ring of energy, while in his Godzilla Ultima form, he emits a focused blue-violet beam capable of destroying buildings, tanks, and creatures like Manda, which is enhanced after surpassing 100 meters in size. In his Godzilla Aquatalese, he is an adept swimmer who is capable of reaching speeds of up to 80 knots and can withstand extreme underwater pressures. Godzilla is able to use flammable ice vapor, which sounds like a contradiction, but in his amphibia form, he can breathe a flammable vapor, which causes a massive explosion when ignited. He is also extremely durable while being resistant to gunfire and can shrug off tank fire. He can also rapidly heal himself if injured and also displays faster regeneration ability. Godzilla is capable of generating the substance archetype in the form of red dust, which can alter surroundings and terraform area. He can also extend blood into tentacle-like formations for defensive purposes. Godzilla displays immense physical strength, biting and attacking creatures like Manda and the supersized Jet Jaguar. Marvelous Verdict and that marks the end of yet another marvelous video. It has been a roller coaster of a ride as we explored the different forms of Godzilla as he unleashed chaos across Tokyo and its coast. The two protagonists of the show, Mei and Yoon, were brilliant with their combination of theory and practical application. It was fun to see the age-old classic of Robot vs. Beast with some amazing music to accompany it. As we have come to the end of our video, we hope for another season of Godzilla, singular point, with more drama and even more action. Which form of Godzilla among these has been your favorite? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It means the world to us when you help us grow. So until next time, may our curiosities of another world never diminish.